Okay, so yesterday, I guess YouTube <laughs> was on crack and uh, and it cut off both of the videos that I did yesterday for the 21 questions. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to, you know, kind of go through the ones that, that I missed or that YouTube cut off and put those in. Um, the very first video, um, I had an anonymous question from my Twitter and I answered, I got like one sentence out and then it cut the rest of it off. So I'm going to finish answering that question. Um, the question was, what do you think about sex on the first night? And um, the first sentence that I got out was, I think that it happens. And then that was all I got to say. <laughs> um, but what I went on to say was that um, I think, you know, that, that people are, that people are grownups. Um, I think that it, I don't know that it necessarily means what it used to um, or what people always thought that it did. I know people that have met and, and had sex the first night and went on to be married for 20 years and, and they were happy. And then I've known other people who had sex one night and never spoke again. So I think that it's definitely up to the individual. I guess the question would be why you're doing it uh, and how you're doing it. Um, so yeah, so that, that's my thoughts about that. Um, let me mark this so that I know I've done it. And moving on, this is from Chris, again, Christopher. And it says, um, have you ever had a meaningless relationship, like a sexual escapade where that's all it was? And if so, how did it happen? Um, and here's what I would say. I don't, I see to me, you can't use meaningless in relationship in the same sentence, because if it's a relationship at all, it's probably not meaningless. Um, and I think what's happened in the past with me has been even, you know, there was a, there was a time period where I specifically chose people that I knew I had no hope in hell of ever be with like forever. Like I knew there was something about them that would make them not a fit with, for me in terms of a significant meet my kids. We're going to be together person. You know what I mean? Um, doesn't mean that there weren't things about them that I didn't like or that didn't attract me to them. It just meant I knew this person couldn't get to my heart. Okay. So um, that doesn't make it meaningless. It just makes it not, not significant in terms of, you know, marriage and, and emotions and things like that. So um, inevitably though, in, 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 90% of, of any type of relationship that I've, that I've had, somebody ends up, you know, getting, catching feelings or getting involved. Um, I don't know that I'm shallow enough to maintain those types of relationships. So <laughs> that's, there's your answer. Um, I'm going to mark this one. And um, this next one is from, um, Huh, I thought, hmm, I thought I answered both of these, but I'm going to do both of them because maybe I didn't, uh, or maybe, you know, I know that I did, but it, it might have gotten cut off. Anyway, um, the first question says, from Ash, Ashley, and it says, have you ever felt that some of your tests and trials come from God to show you how much strength you actually have? And my response to this is, is I don't know that I subscribed to... God necessarily bringing bad things, right? I do think that if you are engaging in behavior that um, that puts you in a position where life can teach you a lesson, I do believe that God allows you to be taught. Absolutely, I do. Um, because, you know, he does need us to kind of recognize things on our own, you know? Um, so, yeah, I, it's not like I think that, for example, Ashley, you know, and as a lot of people do know about, you know, my Graves disease and things like that. Do I think that do I think that God gave me that? No, um, no, because, you know, I just don't think so. Um, I just don't think that's his character. Um, however, I do think that just kind of like the Job syndrome, you know, that he allows us to endure certain things in order for, for them to develop in us and bring out what we need to have, if that makes sense. So hopefully that, that answers your question. Um, next question. Um, do you feel that you'd be in a different place emotionally, mentally, or spiritually if you weren't a parent? Do your children give you life in a sense? Uh, absolutely. Uh, yes and yes to both of those questions. Um, I think that, you know, for me, my girls, 
oftentimes are the the drive and the motivating factor for me, at, you know, to keep pushing and to keep striving and to, uh, and, and, you know, to just not lay down, I guess. Um, having said that, I think that, I think that even if I weren't a parent, there would still be that survivor thing in me, you know what I mean? Because it was there before I became a parent. I think that it's just that once you have children, once you have babies, I think that they automatically become that for you. If you're, if you're a real parent, I don't understand the people that have children who don't, who don't connect to them, who don't care about them, who, who it doesn't matter if they've never spoken to them. I don't quite get that. Um, so yes, I do believe that, that for me personally, um, my daughter's, uh, definitely give me life. They give me, they give me joy sometimes when I, I don't think there's any reason they give me hope when, you know, most of the time I might not have it. Um, and you know, they still let me know that, uh, that, I, that I can love. Um, even when, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not loving in a, in a different type of relationship, if that makes sense. So yes. And yes. Um, Last missing question, I do believe. Let me just double check. Yes, the last missing question um, is anonymous, and it says who we are to be, which for those of you who don't know, I wrote a new piece the other day called Who Who We Are, uh, Who We Need to Be. And this person is referring to that poem. So in order for me to answer this, I got to kind of give you a little background on the piece. Um, the piece is basically... As y'all know, pretty much everything I write is is my life. And um, in this piece, I'm kind of describing a unique relationship where um, two people were together before, and at that time they were both single. And now one of them has moved on and, and is married to someone else. But, and, but they still love each other, you know what I mean? And they still are friends and they're still there for each other and they still confide in each other and they still find happiness with each other, even though they're not together. And the, 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 the unique thing about this relationship is that no one is trying to pull the other one away from where they need to be. And they don't talk sexually, they don't cross boundaries. They just know that they love each other and they are who they need to be to each other. And so the question about this is why does this happen so often? or happen at all. And I don't know that I have like a, I think, I think that, I think that a lot of the times, um, I think a lot of the times who we end up marrying isn't always our best love. Um, and I think sometimes we marry for the, not sometimes, a lot of the times people marry for the wrong reasons. And when that happens, you're inevitably going to have something that's missing, something that's not there. It doesn't mean that you can't work at it. It doesn't mean that you can't be happy. It doesn't mean that you can't be content. It just means that it's it's still not that something that you had with that other person. And um, and so I think that there has to be a, a balance in that. You know what I mean? If it's if it's real, if it's a real love, then that person is not trying to sway you from home and, and is not trying to take you away from your family and your children. And if you're really worth loving, you wouldn't think of leaving them anyway, if that makes sense. So, um, but I think, I think it happens because we get married for the wrong reasons and we're too stubborn or, or, or ignorant in the relationships that, that we should be loving in, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. So there's a whole, I could answer this question for another 10 minutes, but I'm just saying that it does happen. And I think that it happens because we mess up the good stuff when we have it. And, uh, and then when we're with what we choose later, uh, we still, we still long for the good stuff, you know? So anyway, um, that's it. And so yesterday in my videos, I was chewing gum and I, I normally never do that in my videos, but yesterday and today, my daughter gave me gum. So I couldn't like not not take the gum, you know what I mean? Um, cause she's my baby. So, um, and she had this great, amazing new gum she wanted me to try. So I did, um, you guys come out November 20th, um, and, and check out the show. I'm going to be at wine up. I'm going to be releasing my third project called dual diagnosis. It's a CD DVD combo. And I'm also going to be kind of releasing a, a snippet 
uh, two out of the five pieces of, uh, of my product line that we hope to launch. So I would, and, and we're going to party. We're going to party after that. The show itself, we're going to have food, um, the show, and then an after party. Um, so it should be a really good time. Danny Teenies will be on deck and, uh, and on special. So I hope to see you guys there. Hit me up on my website at thisisdanny.com and on Twitter at Danny the Poet. So I'll see you guys later. Peace, I'm out.